What's going on guys, Dominic with Steel Industries. Today we're gonna to go over the long-awaited Nighthawk video. In this video, we're gonna break it down into three parts. We're gonna go over why we developed the Nighthawk, how it went, and the final machined version. So let's start. Uh, we wanted to basically make our own product line. We wanted to start our product line and make our own products. And so uh, the best way to do that was coming out with a night vision binocular. It's something we've been wanting to do for a while now. So we took feedback from consumers in the commercial and mill and LE market of what they would want in the ultimate goggle. Uh, we took that feedback and came out with the Nighthawk. So this is the 3D printed version that we did. It was a rapid prototype version to confirm everything looked good before we proceeded with CNC. In this version, we had a, a battery pack capability, IP adjustment, two knobs here instead of push button. One is for on, on IR, as well as manual gain. Powered by CR123, it basically does everything that someone would want in a goggle. You have your manual gain capability, you have battery pack capability, as well as onboard power, and it, it does not use push button. So from there, once we confirmed everything was good to go, we went ahead and moved to machining it with our machine shop. I do wanna note that this one is scratched up because we did run it over with a car, so please ignore the um, scratches on this housing. But this is the one, one of the ones that we took to SHOT Show. This one is very similar to the 3D printed prototype version, but it's made out of aluminum. We ran multiple units in-house, um, as well as sent out some units for people to test and get feedback on, um, as well as we took feedback from SHOT Show. Uh, you know, some initial testings uh, from in-house and out of the house, we quickly learned that the straight on battery pack wasn't gonna work as well as the IPDs needed to be a little bit larger, specifically if you were wearing gloves. Um, and we wanted the housing to have more of a look to it versus it just being kind of plain with no extrusions. Uh, and it doesn't really have an identity, you could say. Something from a builder perspective we took from some of the people we sent it to was, uh, we don't wanna epoxy the pin to indent to hold the tube in. We wanted to make a call out for it when the pods are being machined and just have it built into the housing. So with all that being said, we now have the final machined version. Um, this version is very similar-ish to the one we took at SHOT Show, except it has an identity now. Not only did we move the battery pack at an angle to allow the cable to go out and around your helmet instead of directly on it, we enlarged the IPD screws as well as shortened the overall length of the unit. We were able to accomplish this because we found out we could move the board in a way that allowed us to do it, the main head unit board. Something we did also have to do is enlarge the um, side arms, I'll call them, or the hinges uh, that connect to the pod. We had to do this to allow more room for the flex cables to connect to, to the boards that go in the side to have your pigtail plug into it. Uh, we just wanted a little more room so it wasn't really tight to work with when we're assembling the units. As well as, as you can see, we did a lot of extrusions and a lot of cuts around the housing to make it look sleeker and give it more of an identity. Uh, we took feedback from SHOT Show, in-house testing, as well as out-of-the-house testing, and we believe that this is the final version that the consumer market is going to receive with this housing. We have a lot of pride built into this thing. We really wanted to make it a uh, system that people know and love, and we believe that this final iteration is just that. Something I do want to note is because we shortened the length of the housing, we actually got to shorten the battery cap. As you guys know, this is powered by a CR123. Um, so instead of having a full length battery compartment, we went ahead and shrunk it down to the actual size of the CR123, which allowed it for having more of this natural uh, sleek uh, design versus having something that just didn't look well in my opinion. So. That is the final machine version of the Nighthawk. More information will come soon about this housing, but we did just want to release a quick update video, kind of show you the final design uh, uh, process for this housing and what to expect when you're purchasing it. 
all units um, that also purchase a completed system from us, meaning paired with one of our tube options and just fully built up, you're also gonna be able to receive our Steel Industries battery pack. This battery pack is powered by two CR123A batteries, as well as you have the option here to add weight if need be. It comes with three weighted plates um, that from the factory, and if you want to buy more weighted plates, you could always do that as well. This just gives you the ability to run extra weight if you need to, if you're running a heavier system. System. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this quick update of the Steel Industries Nighthawk. If you guys have any questions regarding the system, um, let us know. We are going to release some more videos about it in the future, but we wanted to just give you a quick update. So if you have any questions, drop a comment below, send us an email. As always, stay nocturnal.